Hello and welcome to today's children's moment. We are going to be doing um, our third of three stories that Jesus told about um, lost things. We started with a lost sheep, then we went to a lost coin, and now we go to a lost son. And your challenge is to figure out which son was really lost. But before we do that, let's set our sacred space. Do you remember why we set a sacred space? Yeah, it's to help us remember that God is with us. It's to help us to become more aware of God who's already here. So let's do this together. And if you have an altar at home, I invite you to set this up along with me. So we begin with God the Creator. Yeah. Picture of the earth here. And God the Christ. Let me try to get the stand to work today. God in Christ. And last but certainly not least, God the Holy Spirit. So we remember God the Creator, God the Christ, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. And we invite God to be here with us. So, I thought we might start with a prayer today. One of the things that um, that I really want these uh, videos to do is not only to offer you um, a lesson, uh, not only to offer up a, um, a Bible story for you to hear and to reflect on, but also give you um, some resources so that you and your families can um, chat with God at home. And um, this uh, Common Prayer for Children and Families book has been really helpful for that. Um, I don't know about you all, but sometimes I have a really hard time coming up with words to pray. Not even the right words, but I just don't even really know where to begin sometimes. And that's where this book comes in handy. Because for a lot of different things that we're feeling, there's a prayer for that. Um, and it helps me when I read one of these prayers to then have words of my own to pray or to stop and listen for God's response. And as I was watching the news this week, this prayer and the one that we're gonna close with both really um, were meaningful to me. So this one is a prayer for people who suffer from bullying. Will you pray with me? Living God, who sees all the people of the world as your beloved children, look especially upon those who are teased, excluded, and pushed around. Protect them from harm and keep them safe in your love. Help the bullies among us to remember it is never too late to change from being a bully into a friend. Amen. All right. So, as I already said, we're going to um, hear a story that is our last in the set of lost things. So we lost a sheep and we found it and we celebrated. 
we lost a coin. We found it. We celebrated. Now we're going to hear a story about a son who gets lost and found. And then we're going to celebrate. But there are two sons in this story. So it's going to be interesting. You good? Okay. So, um, let's listen together. And we're reading this from the uh, Growing in God's Love, a story Bible. And again, I really like this one because um, there's a very diverse group of uh, editors and uh, illustrators that um, were a part of this book. And I like hearing many different voices. Okay. So let's read this. Uh, two sons and their father together. Oh, okay. Okay. It's based on the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Oh, but you're right on my legs, bud. Okay. Here we go. Did you go to school or church this year? And someone you knew wasn't there. Maybe she was sick or had moved away. Jesus told this story about counting people. Who's there? Who is missing? A family had two sons. One day, the younger son told his father, I'm getting out of here. I want my share of the money you have saved for me. So this father gave half of the money to the younger son and half to the older son. This was a bit different since children don't usually get that money until after their parent died. The younger son packed his bags and money and traveled far away. He spent everything having a really good, he spent everything having a really good time. Then he was in trouble. The country where he was living didn't have enough food. Now he was out of money and food. He looked for a job. Finally, someone hired him to feed pigs. He was so hungry. He would have been glad to eat the pig's food. But no one noticed. No one shared their food. The younger son said to himself, the people who work for my father have more to eat than I do. I'm always hungry. I'm going home. I'll say to my father, I've done a bad thing. I've lost everything you gave me. I'm a really bad son. I'll work for your farm if you'll feed me. He was walking down the road when he saw his father was running to meet him. His father hugged him and kissed him. The younger son told his father what he had planned to say. Instead of being angry, his father started planning a party. He told his servants, bring the best of everything for my son, a robe, a ring, new sandals. Fix a wonderful meal so we can celebrate. My son was lost, but now he has come back. And the party began. But the older son was working in a field. He heard the music. Moving closer, he saw dancing and wondered what was going on. Why a party? Why had it, er, sorry, uh, why a party? He hadn't been invited. A servant told him, your younger brother has come back. Your father is having a party to celebrate. But no one noticed that the older son wasn't at the party. No one gave him anything to eat. So he stalked off angrily. 
his father saw him and begged his older son to return. The older son said, you're giving a party for my brother who left and lost all the money you gave him. I stayed here working all the time. You never had a party for me. The father said, I know you stayed with me, but we need to celebrate. I thought your younger brother was lost forever, but he's alive. He was lost, but not anymore. Hmm. See that picture? So, we're going to do our hear, see, act. Hear. What do you think the older brother would like to say to the younger brother? Hmm. That's a tough question. I think it can be kind of hard for brothers or siblings or, um, to understand where the other one is coming from. And I bet that older brother was feeling really bad about not being celebrated while he stayed, but the younger brother needed to be celebrated. Hmm. I wonder if after this, the older brother did end up celebrating his younger brother, or if he continued to just be angry about it. Hmm. What do you think? C. What's another way this story could have ended? Hmm. What do you think? What's another way this story could have ended? Maybe the father didn't welcome the younger son home. Maybe the older son joined in the party right away. Maybe the younger son felt too guilty to even come home. Hmm. A lot of different ways it could have ended, huh? What do you think? Count the people who love you. Count the people you love. Who else do you want to add? Hmm. Maybe you could make a list of the different people who love you and the people that you love. Maybe you could even send notes to the people you love and just tell them that. Tell them that you love them. Sometimes we really need to hear that, don't we? I love you, Oberon, and I know you love me too. Yes, I do. Yes. Sometimes people really do need to hear that they are loved, huh? Well, that is the last of our three stories. The three stories that Jesus told about lost people, lost sheep, and lost coins. Why do you think this was so important for Jesus to tell three different stories like this? Hmm? Kind of feel like in this last story, we, we heard a different side of it too because we heard the brother's reaction, the older brother's reaction, right? It's like in the story of the shepherd, maybe those 99 sheep who were saved who were with the shepherd before he left, maybe it's what they would have been feeling too. Like, wait, who's going to protect us if you go and find the one who's in danger? Hmm. But it was really important to go find the one who is in danger. And it's really important to welcome back those who are hurt. Hmm. What have you learned from these different stories? 
I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear what you think. I think Oberon and I are ready to close in a prayer. And this one is one that um, I wanted to read again because of what's happening in the news right now. We have so many neighbors, friends, fellow beloved children of God who are in pain right now, who are really struggling because the color of their skin is making it so that they don't get the same treatment, the same justice and respect that people who are white like me get. So it's so important just like Jesus went after to find, or Jesus told stories of finding and standing with those who are in danger, those who are in trouble, those who are lost. It's important for us to be able to stand up and say that black lives matter. And I think that that's something that we as a church can do. And this prayer is a prayer for those who are hurt and abused. Like so many black men and black women are hurt and abused by the police or by our so-called justice system or by people who just aren't aware and they aren't being kind and sensitive. So let's pray. Loving God, in Jesus you were bullied, beaten, and killed. You are always on the side of those whose souls or bodies are mistreated. Help us to embrace those who are hurting. Fill us with your spirit of healing and give us the courage to stand beside them and the wisdom to prevent violence and abuse from happening again. Amen. Amen. Okay. So it's time to put away our sacred space, put away our reminder of God as creator, a reminder of God as Christ, a reminder of God the Holy Spirit. May you know today that you are blessed, that you are a beloved child of God. Amen. Oh, be your, hey, I can't turn off the video.